All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have lots of things to get into today. We'll start off here talking about the Xbox Series X and S in Japan and the sales over there. But before we do start, if you do enjoy daily gaming news, make sure to hit that subscribe button and help the channel grow. Also, check out my Spotify link is in the description. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like button. But as we know, Xbox Japan. The Xbox One generation was a terrible generation. And one of the things that Phil Spencer came out and said at the beginning of this current generation was wanting to really grow in that region and kind of embarrassed on how the Xbox One has done. And I think so far this gen, they've done a decent job of making the ecosystem far more appealing just with the content that's being offered on the Xbox Series X. S games going into Xbox Game Pass day one and getting... Games that just were never there, like if you think about the Atlas games, you think about Square Enix games, some that skipped the platform previously or types of games like Final Fantasy 14, which I don't think many people would have saw coming to Xbox now being there. And this has pushed the Xbox Series X and S to have passed 600k sales in Japan. Now, of course, it's not a massive number, especially when you do compare it to their main competitors with the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 5. It will never, ever sell near those numbers in japan i don't think xbox can ever really compete there uh, in the console sales numbers but that's something they've realized as well which is why we're seeing them expanding their ecosystem and getting people to try to jump in in different ways but it says here that a Japanese outlet is reporting this week that two Xbox consoles have reached around 600,000 in sales in total with the Xbox Series S leading the way at 315,431 units and then the Xbox Series X at 285 and 14,000 units. So that's what the sales are pushing it to about 600,000 units and the Xbox One sold maybe like 100k units in Japan at least those are the numbers that we do have and the Xbox 360 which was their most successful console there sold 1.6 million in sales well the Series X and S hit a million sales we will see I mean there's still a few more years left here of the generation before we start talking about what is to come next but I think at the end of the day where they're looking at here is how do we get Xbox games in front of gamers over there, which is a part of the strategy of putting games onto PlayStation and putting games onto Nintendo. How do they get people into the Xbox ecosystem in any way possible, whether that is through Game Pass and cloud gaming or through getting people to have, have an Xbox account by playing games on PlayStation and Nintendo? So that's kind of where I think they've shifted to. I think it is a smart strategy because they will never, ever be able to compete in any way, not even surpass them, but just even compete in terms of the console sales versus PlayStation and Nintendo specifically in Japan. So moving away from that, trying something new, trying to gain more territory in other ways is smart. And I mean, they've done a lot, but there's also been step backs with things like Tango Gameworks closing down. And I wonder if Xbox is even considering now trying to get a first party developer in that region or trying to grow more in that region with having developers working specifically on xbox titles as the main platform that is something yet to be foreseen i would see them in the future maybe looking at more smaller developers indie devs uh trying to pick those up especially if they're going to be launching games into game pass and things like that and try to appeal that way but then also going into the future there's a, something the rumors of the handheld i think the handheld will have a lot better chances in japan than the main big console that they are probably going to be releasing alongside it as well so interesting stuff there we'll see what the final numbers are when this generation is over and of course game pass is the driving force of xbox and this is just a quick look as to what is to come in the next two weeks for xbox game pass i think now we are going to be getting into the second half of the year where it's going to be Great titles, great months, especially with first party content dropping. But just for July, this is what is coming. We have Neon White coming to Xbox day one. So day one version of the Xbox version of it. Chia coming to Xbox day one as well. Again, the Xbox version on July 11th for both of those games. Magical Delicacy, another day one game coming July 16th. Well, I guess these are all day one games as we go through them. Flock also coming July 16th. Dungeons of Hinterburg is coming on July 18th which is a game that we've seen at the Xbox showcases looks really cool. You're going through dungeons and fighting, but there's also a huge social element to this game and you're having to work on your relationships and stuff. So I think that one will be an interesting one to try a little bit of a change in pace. You have Flintlock, the siege of Dawn, July 18th. One that a lot of people are looking forward to a third person action game 
cool combat. I believe there's also a lot of magic thrown in there. So it looks like that will be fun. And then again, uh, another game that you could say would appeal to the Japanese audience, but it also appeals to everybody else. And a deal that they've made with Capcom showing that working relationship with Capcom. Previously, there was Exo Primal Day 1 in Game Pass. Now we have here on July 19th, Kunitsu Gami, Path of the Goddess coming on Day 1. Very unique looking game. Looks like a ton of fun. I will be checking this out. So that is just a quick preview as to what is still to come this month. And I'm guessing there will be more stuff because we haven't even gotten that second half of the month announcement yet where things that have already been announced are just in addition to stuff that has not been announced. So we will see what happens. Maybe fingers crossed we get some backlog stuff some back catalog stuff so maybe case stuff. there are rumors that abk stuff is coming closer to august but maybe they will give us something nice here in july as well so very exciting times when it comes to game pass so many games to play i don't know how people get through all of this stuff now when it comes to starfield we know mods are going to be huge we talked about this last week but here's an update it's kind of a disappointing update Project Hamriel was going to be bringing the Elder Scrolls universe into Starfield. And as we know, with all the planets available, you can go in there, take a planet, add mods, and pretty much create your own world. What was potentially going to be coming sounded extremely exciting, and it looks like it isn't going to be happening now based off of the people who are creating this, basically saying there wasn't enough support. So here is what they say. They say, after sharing the initial content with the community, it became clear that the support we were hoping for wasn't there. Many fans voiced concerns and indicated that they were not interested in seeing this project come to fruition. In terms of the team, we were a small group of passionate modders excited about the possibilities. However, the feedback we received made us realize that the excitement we felt wasn't shared by the broader community. So that is the end of Project Hamriel. Unfortunate and also kind of hard to believe if I'm being completely honest that there would be a lack of excitement for this. I mean, a lot of people love The Elder Scrolls is I would say probably their most popular franchise at Bethesda and being able to take that and bring it into Starfield, obviously with some changes and just have it being its own unique thing in the game sounded insanely exciting to me. So I don't know how true that is. Maybe there just wasn't enough funding. Maybe they took on the project and then after realized, wow, this is way too big of an endeavor. So we got to back out of this as soon as possible. I mean, we can even just go down here and, and see some of the comments. And it just seems like this person says, always oh, seemed over ambitious. That's a long time to commit. So I think the ambition of it and then realizing that's way too big was probably one of the main reasons they are backing out of it or not wanting to do it again this one says it's too ambitious this says yeah i get the feeling this was less about the community's response more about the team realizing the scope of the project and the fact that devoting years and years of your life to a project that has no financial benefit for a game that has a relatively small player base nowadays wasn't a great use of their time or skills uh, that may be a thing i think the ambition the length of time and if there isn't funding for it if there isn't enough money get, that you're going to make off of this at the end of the day maybe that is the main reason they backed up because that would have been a massive endeavor to take on and a lot of time would have been put into that but unfortunately it isn't going to be happening at least for now unless maybe somebody comes in and, and funds this project for the modders and they decide to actually go ahead and make it okay let's jump over here let's talk a little bit of call of duty because we do have some rumors and speculation as to what is going to be happening with warzone and the loot system for Black Ops 6. It looks like it will be going back to the original loot system. It says a Call of Duty leaker has claimed that Call of Duty Warzone will be moving away from the Warzone 2 era of its backpack system for its Black Ops 6 integration. And that's according to the reputable Call of Duty leaker Bob Network UK, who claimed that Warzone will return to its original loot system. The leaker has also revealed that wild cards will be added to loadouts in Warzone. And earlier we did hear that the Warzone original map for dance has been delayed until 2025. And again, this is a rumor that Insider Gaming, they say, have corroborated. So that is just some information if you're looking for more info on Warzone, what is going to happen. It looks like they are going to go back to the classic loot system. If you're a fan of this game mode, uh, I'm sure you'll have your opinions on that if you play a lot of it. I, me, myself, I don't play too much Warzone. I'm kind of just more of the classic multiplayer. I've never really been huge into Battle Royale, but it, that is probably something that people who are fans will have a lot to say about. Now, if you like the Yakuza games, if you like RGG Studios, it looks like they are already working on their next game, and they're saying fans will actually be surprised by this. We have here that during the Essence of Fandom event at an anime expo, the 
company teased that what they are working on next. And according to several fans in attendance, the studio said, we can't tell you what kind of game it is, but I will tell you, you will be surprised. And not, uh, I wouldn't be that surprised if they come out with something completely different. I mean, they do have some wacky, quirky stuff and they've changed the style of game that they have made in the past. So I wonder what this will be. Is this another entry? into the like a dragon series or is this a brand new game it does say fans later clarify that the team seemed to be referring to the next like a dragon title rather than another franchise so i guess that kind of answers that but not 100 percent right because we don't know if that was lost in translation of any sort and if that information is 100 percent correct but it does sound like they will be cooking up something good and and they don't really disappoint for fans of this series you can tell they haven't really disappointed with any of their major releases recently, uh, at least. I mean, some people may have not liked the change of gameplay to the more turn-based and going from action and stuff, but overall, uh, the games have definitely delivered. Okay, let's talk about some Final Fantasy fourteen because this is, I think, a smart move, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if this happened, but it really does show that they are really trying to expand this out to as many people we saw come onto Xbox. And now it looks like it is coming to mobile via Tencent. This is according to Exputer, claiming that a mobile port is the result of a strategic alliance between the two companies originally announced back in 2018. Now, we don't have any information on this, but it is a massive MMO. It, it, graphically, it isn't very intensive, and I think you could definitely get this running on mobile devices. I mean, we're seeing what they are doing with mobile devices, and the iPhone specifically where AAA games are running on it. But if they can get Final Fantasy running on mobile phones where you can take it with you on the go no, no matter where you go, and then come back home and log into your account on your PC or on your Xbox or your PlayStation. That would be insane. And it would probably be a good idea at some point to get this onto the Nintendo Switch and just expand out this MMO. It's a very successful MMO with tons of players in it. And releasing it on mobile would be smart. And it's a huge move here, I think, for Tencent, for Square Enix. And it really shows that mobile, the expansion into mobile is going to be where a lot of these major companies want to go in order to bring in more money not not to stop developing triple a games but to bring in that mobile money and then expand out with being able to invest in more bigger titles and more triple a games and i mean i think this is a bigger competitor right now to xbox than anyone else when you think about the mobile space and how xbox recognized that they're pushing out more on mobile they went and bought abk they're pushing out their cloud onto mobile you're either going to have tencent here with big mobile titles especially a game like final fantasy 14 so it'll be pretty interesting to see how that goes moving forward now if you're a fan of exo primal it looks like their seasonal content is ending capcom has confirmed this now this isn't like the end of the game or anything they're just going back i believe to their previous monthly content it says following this the previous monthly content for the game will return monthly beginning with season one which returns next week they they put up this tweet saying valued exo fighters with the release of title update for all planned exo primal seasonal content is now complete from july 11th season one returns with subsequent returning seasons and content starting on the first of each month so it's not the end of the game it's not the end of the content they're just moving away from the seasonal stuff and they're going to be bringing out monthly content after that instead they say all gameplay modes will remain available to play includes the main dino survival mode as well as end game content such as savage gauntlet and time loop rebellion and they do say here if you're playing alone or a match with only a few other players or bots ai controlled exo fighters it will still be added so that you can fully enjoy the hammerhead stories and and reach the ending so there you go game isn't dying isn't going away it did have a very strong start i believe there was like over a million players in the first week or so or the first two weeks of the game in fact it says capcom said the game attracted one million players in its first two weeks so it was huge at the start i don't know how big it is right now but this has come out uh, about a year ago july 2023 is when it released on ps5 series xs ps4 xbox one pc and it was a uh, an xbox game pass release on top of that okay gta 5 this one is pretty interesting and it makes me even question more going forward what are they going to do with gta online after gta 6 comes out is it just going to be an expansion to the current gta online or are they going to be releasing a brand new thing where it's completely different i feel like they're going to just continue and expand on the current thing but we will see but the story here is gta 5 story dlc was scrapped because gta online was a cash cow says the cinematics editor this is what the cinematics editor is claiming it's joseph rubino who they say he was a senior camera artist and virtual cinematographer at rockstar for six years has told 
San in Play YouTube channel that he worked on the Trevor DLC before it was canceled, saying that was kind of my thing. I was one of the main editors, camera artists, and doing a lot of second unit on stage stuff. Then he says, then we split our teams into two. So I stayed on GTA Online and then this DLC, which Trevor's actor Stephen Ogg was very important important part of and then some of the team overlapped and went to red dead redemption 2 early on and then it says what happened was when gta online came out it was so much of a cash go and people were loving it so much that it was hard to make an argument that a standalone dlc would out compete that and i think looking back now i would say that you could probably do both but that was a business decision that they made so they canceled the single player dlc for just probably putting more resources into online. Of course, they could have afforded to make both if they wanted to. But at that moment when it first came out, maybe that's not where they're what they were thinking. At this point right now, I mean, they could make tons of single player DLC and still have that cash cow of online and make even more cash on it, which is an insane thing. And it just, again, it makes me question, what are they going to do going forward with GTA online? Are they going to scrap it when GTA six comes out or are they just going to continue to expand on it and improve it? Maybe improve the graphics. I mean, they've already done some nice stuff with bringing it to this next gen or this current gen of consoles that will, we will see what they do. I, I feel like I said, they're just going to continue to to expand on it. Uh, add maybe a, a fee where if you want the GTA 6 online world to unlock, you pay that and it'll just continue with the insane cash cow that this game has and that the online world has. If you're a, football, a soccer fan, football fan, I, I guess soccer here in North America, football and, and pretty much everywhere else. EAFC 25, the release date has been leaked with a lengthy early access period so for fans of that it looks like it is coming out september 27th and they say that the ultimate edition will get you seven days of early access will also cost you 100 dollars for the ultimate edition and then of course the standard edition is 70 dollars. and ea play members and game pass members uh, xbox ultimate game pass members get the 10 days or 10 hour 10 days would be phenomenal but 10 hour trial of the game early which you get with all the ea games and that's another perk and feature of xbox game pass ultimate and it's also the fact that you know all these sports games are coming into game pass sometime in the future about six months or so if you don't want to play it right away if you don't want to buy at retail price they come into game pass if you're of xbox game pass ultimate because of ea play which is just another great thing to add to that service and finally la noir this was a super cool game when it first came out especially the animations the facial animations it was pretty revolutionary what they did with this game the writing was really cool and there was a article going around saying that they were potentially working on a new 1940s game and unfortunately or, or fortunately depending on how you want to look at it they are not the video game deluxe the developers behind it are not working on a brand new game. They're actually only doing stuff here for old projects and that they are working exclusively for Rockstar. There, there's an article going over this, but this is the update to this. If you did see that, it says Video Game Deluxe has released the following statement regarding the project. They say we are working exclusively on projects for Rockstar. We commissioned some music from a local composer, Freya Garbit, for a VR project that we are working on a number of years ago. When the when between projects, it is based on a case from LA Noir that did not make the cut, but was more of a tech demo than anything else. We have no idea whether this will ever see the light of day, but we decided to finish the score commission to support a local composer. So that's what people were speculating. Okay, could this be a brand new thing coming from them exclusively without working with Rockstar? That isn't the case, but maybe they are... Maybe Rockstar will get them to make something brand new. You, you never know, right? Because they did publish LA Noir, so maybe something comes out of that in the future this was a cool game it was a definitely a different style of game when it came out and technologically like i said with you especially with the animations the facial animations it blew a lot of people away but i'll end the video there guys if you did enjoy this video hit that thumbs up if you're new here hit that subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video